next comment or question comes from Deluxe. Uh, and this is in response to exploring the Roland JX8P part one, a video I did in May 2021, which reminds me I must give Richard a bell. Um, and he, uh, he writes, rudimentary knowledge at best. Most people already know this stuff. Yes, but I'm talking to the people who don't. Uh, if you want to clog up YouTube with videos, maybe add something that everybody doesn't already know. Sorry, bud, but do your homework and contribute something significant. We don't need more useless videos. Well, thank you, Deluxe, for your feedback. Um, I'm staying true to my rules of engagement with this one in that the commentators may provide a constructive criticism on the video. Unfortunately, I don't agree with what he said as the video does in the description say what it's all about. And this is, this is I, I get quite a few, um, as any probably YouTube channel does get, um, disgruntled viewers. Um, most of which, if they swear, just get an instant ban, if I'm brutally honest. Um, I've got one at the moment who I'm gonna call out um, on a video, uh, hopefully I'll record, the, record today, um, where he was just playing around obnoxious, so he's won himself an instant ban from the channel. Um, but you know, the bottom line, bottom line is when you do videos about keyboards, especially legacy keyboards, there is a degree of knowledge that, um, people will have. And you've got to assume that when you start with these videos, you're starting with a very low knowledge base. Now I know that some of the guy, you guys out there have a lot of extensive knowledge about some of these legacy keyboards. Therefore, if you watch one of these videos that starts at a fairly low knowledge base, you're gonna think, well, you know, what's this guy gabbling on about? I know, I know all this stuff. Well, you know, that's the, probably the point where you decide you're gonna switch off and you're not gonna watch it any further because I'm not telling you anything new. But however, if you are new and you think that you wanna go and buy a legacy keyboard, and you want to know what the keyboard is all about, then you need to start building your knowledge up. And that's where you start with the videos. So some of the videos will start saying, well, this is a basic keyboard. It's an eight oscillator. It's a four oscillator. It's an eight oscillator. It works in this way. It does that, da, da, da. okay. You get that. Um, you know, these are the big pitfalls. These are, the, you know, that's kind of the, well, this is an overview of this keyboard. And then you will do further videos that actually go into some detail on the keyboards. Now, unfortunately, with the with the with the JX8P, I didn't have an awful lot of time with it um, for one reason or another. Uh, predominantly because um, the guy who lent it to me, um, the day after he lent it to me, sold it. Um, and I've had that on a couple of <laughs> a couple of keyboards that have been lent to me. They've been lent to me because the the person is selling it. And then a few days after I get the keyboard and I start doing my research, the guy, you know, they ring me up and say, um, sorry, John, but I've sold it. Uh, can I come pick it up? So um, sometimes you don't get an awful lot of time. And I don't have um, a JX8P. What I do have is I have the J, um, no, I don't have a J, JX8P at all. I'm thinking of the Juno. Um, Cause I borrowed a Juno and I, I did some playoff work with the Juno and the Juno, the JU, uh, dash 06A, um, which was a phenomenal little boutique and actually very, 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 very close to the original. Um, but that, that's kind of, so, you know, some people like the videos, some people don't like the videos and that's your prerogative on the channel. So I guess, I guess this guy watched it, left a comment and gave me a, gave me a dislike. That is the YouTube game, unfortunately. But that, I, what I just want to do is I just want to try and explain why some of these, some of the videos on the keyboard seem a bit Mickey Mouse in terms of where they start from. They have to, some of them have to assume you have no knowledge of that particular classic keyboard and you're what, seeing this, this keyboard for the first time. Others assume that you have some sort of base knowledge. So normally what will happen with me is I will do a video which will do some sort of summary that explains how the how this keyboard works or what the keyboard's all about. And then I start to go off and explore other areas of the keyboard in more depth on the assumption that you've watched the first video and you get the what is this all about type thing. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram, 
and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next comment or question comes from The Librarian uh, in response to the Death of the Cronus video I did in December 2021. Um, and he writes, LOL, a dedicated workstation is not by any stretch of the imagination, imagination comparable to a flipping Windows PC. I've lost countless hours troubleshooting music PCs rather than writing music. Give me a workstation any day over a flipping Windows machine. <laughs> oh... And I so feel your pain. I so feel your pain. Um, and I've got to be honest that swapping from a PC to a Mac actually solved a lot of problems. But they still exist. Even on the Mac platform, they still exist. Um, but I just found things kind of just worked on the Mac. Whereas on, on PCs, you'd be having conflicting pieces of software and, and God knows what else. And I think that's probably down to the way that the, the OS architecture works between the two platforms, in that um, PCs tend to load everything in a memory, and and the sort of the Linux-based OS that it runs the runs the Mac um, tends to compartmentalize a lot better. So I think that's that's possibly why. Um, but I do agree with the workstation. You kind of just sit down and play. Uh, and I said somewhere that you can rough up a draft into the sequencer and then send it to your door, uh, take it take it further. It does make things easier with the computer involved, um, but it's it's very easy with the workstation to rough out a song and then start to polish it on a computer. I've said before you can use um, a workstation sequencer to publish a, a, a full song if you're so inclined and you're so, you understand it enough, but you do need to, my experience is that roughing it on the workstation and then moving it to the computer is a, is a much better uh, workflow for this stuff. But that's just me, that's my view. Um, others may have different views, and in fact, I know others have really different views. When I said that I used the workstation sequencer, and they were like, why? You're mad. You bonkers. Why are you doing this? Da -da -da -da. And I'm like, but that's that's just, you know. <sighs> so look, everybody works in a different way. That's what I would say. I don't like software VSTs. I use hardware. You know, everybody, everybody works in a different way. But if we all work the same, then surely the world would be very boring. Thank you.